Welcome back. Let's continue on discussing pharmacology, specifically in relation to hypertension. So there are several specific situations that we will use particular hypertension medications due to some contraindications for some medicines or better effectiveness of some medications. So let's talk about those here. So we're specifically going to discuss primary hypertension, also known as essential hypertension, hypertension associated with heart failure, hypertension along with diabetes, hypertension with asthma, and hypertension during pregnancy. So in primary essential hypertension, the medications that we use are thiazides, ACE inhibitors or ARBs, which is angiotensin receptor blockers, and then our dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. When dealing with hypertension and heart failure, we're going to use diuretics first, and then we can also add in ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers, beta blockers, and those beta blockers are specifically used in compensated heart failure, as well as aldosterone antagonists. Something special to note in patients that have heart failure and hypertension, we don't use beta blockers if they are undergoing cardiogenic shock. Um, and we also need to use caution uh, with patients that have heart failure due to something called decompensated heart failure, which we will talk about later. Patients that have diabetes mellitus along with hypertension, we're going to use ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, thiazide diuretics, and or beta blockers. One thing to note here is that with the beta blockers, be cautious with this because it could mask our symptoms of hypoglycemia. So with hypoglycemia, we can get some of those heart flutters uh, and palpitations. Well, if we have a beta blocker, that's going to block those palpitations, and we might mask some of those early warning symptoms of hypoglycemic episodes with diabetics. With patients that have asthma, we're going to use angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, thiazide diuretics, and specifically here, we'll use selective beta blockers. Why are we going to use selective beta blockers versus non-selective beta blockers? Well, the non-selective beta blockers will affect our beta cells, beta receptors. Those beta receptors can cause issues with our vasodilation and vasoconstriction, so with asthma patients, we don't want to give them something that's going to exacerbate those asthma symptoms. We'll also avoid ACE inhibitors with hypertensive patients that have asthma. Finally, in pregnancy, we're going to use hydralazine, labetalol, methyl dopa, or nifedipine to help manage hypertension in pregnant females. Uh, a way to remember which medications we use in pregnancy is he likes my neonate. So he for hydralazine, L and likes is labetalol, M and my is methyl dopa, and then N for neonate is nifedipine. 